Hi, I'm Leah Laney, Chief of Operations at Exapta Solutions. Provided for you is a Uniforce install video to help streamline the installation process. Myself and our Uniforce specialist, Del Nuss, have installed several systems on various models, widths, and spacing. We've also compiled several videos, pictures, and helpful tips to assist you. If you have any questions, please call and request to speak with myself, Leah, or Del Ness. We greatly appreciate your business. Thank you, good luck, and have fun. To assemble the cylinders and all of its components, the cylinders here are, we lay them on a, on a workbench or on a tailgate. Now these cylinders already have fittings installed on them. The fittings will come in a separate bag that you will want to get out and install the fittings first. Here is the cast bushing that we will slide onto the cylinder rod. They all come wrapped with saran wrap that you'll need to remove first. Then take the cylinder and place a drop of red Loctite on the lip of the cylinder rod and then slide the cast bushing over the cylinder rod. You will have about this much of thread showing. And then you will take a rubber mallet and give it several whacks. And once this is completed, set aside until all are assembled. So when installing the cylinders, um, before we actually put it on, just some notes of how it goes on is you put the washer, you slide it through the housing here. And then when it's through there, you wanna make sure that this notch plate locks into place. Um, see the notches here on the bushing and then this washer you want to make sure those lock that keeps this bushing from rocking side to side uh, so we'll slide this through notch on. and you can get the nut finger tied on You do want to a tip, make sure your rock shaft is torqued all the way over and that way your cylinders can reach up. Put the pin through and then punch your roll pin through and then you come back through with an impact wrench and tighten this nut up. Cylinders with 90 degree fittings should be placed when the opener is directly under the frame tube. On the CCS single rank drills, we on the center section, we actually use quite a few 90 degree fittings on the cylinders um, because they the way they route up into the header hose and down to the cylinder. And reference the schematics for the center section of knowing to where to put the 90s. Next is to install the brackets and the trays to hold the header hoses on the wings. On each wing, you'll have two brackets and one tray. Here is the outer end bracket. And here is the inner bracket, secured with a bolt and a nut on the back bottom side of the bracket. And then you'll want to position your trays onto the brackets and secure them. The trays are positioned farther forward on the wings, so when you fold up, they clear the CCS tank and we will not have a tray on the center section. Next is to install the header hoses and fittings and drop hoses. First, you'll want to assemble the header hoses and fittings per schematics provided for each drill section. These are three quarter inch hoses of different lengths, which are the numbers written in inches on the hoses and the schematics provided that we're looking at here. And each section has a single piece of paper that is blown up so you can see it in a larger view. The hoses themselves will also have written on them at the end of the hose the length, whether that's 11 inches or 17 and a half inches, etc. Assemble these pieces together finger tight. On T fittings for drop hoses that are 3 quarter inch, be sure to install the reducer fitting to half inch JIC. Once you complete one section of assembling the header hoses and fittings finger tight, I recommend to go lay the assembled header hoses on the designated location on each drill section. So once you complete the left, 
go take it out to the drill and lay it on top of the tray. Then go do the center and then lay it out and then go do the right and then go lay it out. This way you prevent from mixing up the left or front or center and left, etc. For the center section header hoses, you will use an existing tray on the drill and you will have the fittings pointed towards the tractor forward for the drop hoses to install in. Next step is to install the drop hoses. This is the half inch hoses and you'll see on the schematics where there's an XL plus, XL, XL, etc. This is the length of the hoses that you need to place at each fitting. Reference this page of the schematics to verify what length XL, XL plus is. So for example, XL plus is a 50 inch long drop hose and each drop hose will have marked on it 50 inch or 44 inch. Now is to install the three quarter inch by 72 inch long bridge hoses that connects the wing section to the center section of header hoses. Now we need to secure the header hoses. Slide the header hoses from side to side until drop hoses and various fittings are in their best location. Note that each drill has been outfitted using the schematics provided with exact header drop hose links and fittings. However, it's at your discretion if you want to switch hoses or fittings around for a better route. Tighten all the fittings and header hoses such that all fittings for drop hoses are aimed horizontal. Pointed forward on the center section and towards the back on the wings. Once the fittings are all tightened, use the hose clamps to secure the header hoses to the trays and tighten the lock nuts. Also, use the zip ties provided to further secure header hoses to prevent the hoses from sliding around on the trays. We're almost ready to purge the air out of the system, but before we put oil through all the drop hoses and cylinders, fold the wings up to make sure all pinch points are clear and brackets and trays clear the tank. Here is the Uniforce line body manifold installed onto the frame and the video will show how this is secured. Now every John Deere drill, is the John Deere valve block is usually positioned a little bit different on every system. We had to slide the John Deere valve block over to the left from our view here of this video and then put the Uniforce line body in this position and then you will need to route the feeder hose connecting the manifold line body to the header hose on the center section. We suggest to rotate the 90 degree fittings that are installed into the line body, rotate them down 45 degrees so you can easily access the adjustment knob. It is now time to purge the air out of the system. First, you need to rotate the rock shaft all the way over so the cylinders are collapsed as much as possible. Next, remove the drop hose from the cylinder fitting on both outer end of the wings and have them flow into a five gallon bucket or one gallon jug. Every tractor will be a bit different, but before purging the air, you do need to reduce the flow to at least 5% to begin. Here you can see the air bubbles and the oil is a bit milky coming out. Once the oil has a consistent steady flow, you can turn the system off and put the fitting back onto the cylinder. Most likely during this process, the tractor will run out of oil. So you will want to have a few jugs of oil readily available. When the tractor starts to make a high pitched noise, that is indicating the tractor is out of oil and you will need to add some. Once air is purged and both drop hoses reinstalled, pressure will now be building in the system. For step five and six, use extreme caution when tightening leaky fittings. Note that when activating the circuit, the pressurized hose should be the one going into port two of the Uniforce valve block. Look at steps five and six to complete the process of charging the system. You are now finished. Congratulations. You have successfully completed installing your very own Uniforce hydraulic down pressure system. We would love to hear feedback from you of the installation process and most importantly, your experience of operating Uniforce in the field, of your emergence, of your yields, etc.
good luck this planning season.